Hi, I'm Doug Thompson. Welcome to this edition of Hey, Whatever Happened To? And this week we're talking about the story of Frank Bellamy. And I'm visiting with Joyce Long. And uh, Joyce, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. Well, my pleasure. And uh, this is an interesting book. You've written the book called Be the Jury, Be the Judge, The Pledge of Allegiance. And this is the book here. And you wrote yeah. this, right, Yes, Joyce? I did. Uh -huh. It's not the first one you've written. You've written a was I've it written, a children's book? I've written six children's books called The Adventures of Zorts. And how'd you come up with that? I was in a second grade class. I'd already named my puppet, because I do have a puppet. I'd already named her Zorts. And in the second grade class, they thought it should be The Adventures of Zorts. And my sister, my illustrator, said, I think it should be The Misadventures. And that's... Ah. So we had a lot of help getting a name. Well, that's good. And if somebody wanted to get a hold of those children's books, how could they do so? They're on Amazon. Very good. All right, and you are an uh, English teacher. Yes. And have been for a number of years. Well, I'm a semi-retired English okay. teacher. Now you told me before we started that you're teaching online now. Yes, I teach adults, helping them earn their high school diploma. Okay. It's such an award. Thing. Fantastic. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for being a... English teacher for so many years. <laughs> I already thanked your husband Marvin, who's off camera here. They can't, the audience can't see him. But Marvin brought you up here. Marvin was telling me when he came in, the two of you have been married for 61 years. 61 years. Fantastic. Last Congratulations Wednesday. to you. Why did you write this book, Be the Jury, Be the Judge, about Frank Bellamy? Well, I've, I'm from Cherryville, and I've always heard that Cherryville's author, Frank Bellamy, wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. And then I was asked to be on the scholarship because Cherryville has a Frank Bellamy scholarship. And they gave me some information. And having written a book, I knew I had to write another one. And so I um, got the Chamber of Commerce behind me. And so I just went for it. Well, you know, when you mentioned Cherryville, of course, we did a show. Um, matter of fact, I think it was probably the first show that we did of this present series. And we did the show on Vivian Vance, who was from Cherryville. And then her family moved on to Albuquerque. Uh, and, of course, there's a lot of information about uh, Vivian Vance at Cherryville. Oh, we just had the uh, Vivian Vance Day last Sunday. Oh, I remember. There was 50 or uh, 65, 70 people yeah. coming into the museum. And Lou Ann Graham was there, uh, who was uh, Vivian's sister. Sister. And Lou Ann was kind enough to send us the family album when we did that when we did that oh, show for neat. Vivian. Very neat people. But Frank Bellamy, most people won't know the name Frank <laughs> Bellamy, but what makes Frank Bellamy famous? Frank Bellamy of Cherryville, Kansas, wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. And let me read out of this book for you. Okay. Uh, this says that the Women's Relief Corps and Mrs. Hendricks was the president, and she asked the principal of the school Irene Powell to have the seniors write what they thought they felt about the flag. And she presented it. Mrs. Hancock, whose love of our flag was something akin to worship, recalled the classroom composition penned by a Cherryville schoolboy who has since been across the Pacific with our fighting forces. He was in the Philippines fighting in the Spanish-American War. She submitted the tribute to the National Committee and of the thousands received, read and passed on, a Pledge of Allegiance by Frank E. Bellamy of Cherryville was chosen as the one expressing in fewest words and in strongest phrases the loyalty of an American to his flag and to the land of his birth. Okay. Now, if you're watching this show and you've been watching for a little bit right now, you're trying to figure out what this show is about. Well, here's what it comes down to. Frank Bellamy was from Cherryville, Kansas, and there was a contest in a magazine. What was the name of that magazine? The, it was the Youth Companion Magazine, and that was in 
1890. In 1888, James Upton thought we needed more patriotism, and so he started uh, working with young people, and in 1890 he had a contest called The Flag and the Public School. Frank Bellamy submitted his pledge to that contest. A boy from Clay Center, Kansas won the contest. Frank did not win the contest. But in 1892, September 8, 1892, he saw his pledge in the magazine, the Youth Companion magazine, without credit. He wrote to the magazine. They answered him, said, we're sorry. Everything submitted to the magazine becomes property of the magazine. And he did not get to see that. Did not that. get credit for it. And there's more to that story. Stay tuned. We're going to be back right after the break. Hey, whatever happened to you? Welcome back to Hey, Whatever Happened to Frank Bellamy. I'm Doug Thompson, along with Joyce Long. And Joyce, you wrote the book, Be the Jury, Be the Judge. And the story is about Frank Bellamy. And before we cut away to break, I want to, uh, you were going through a bit of this story on it. So if I understand this right, there was a uh, national publication that was uh, designed to uh, ask for essays for people, students, anybody to submit stories that would uh, honor the flag. Was it limited to a 600 word essay or? It was a 600 word essay and in Frank Bellamy's essay, he wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. And the Pledge of Allegiance, of course, and all of you know, that because you've been through it just like the rest of us, when we were young kids in grade school, we started the class with the Pledge of Allegiance. Still do that in, uh, in many of the functions with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to my flag mm -hmm. is the way it began yep. until, until World War II, and, and then it, it changed. And it's a 23 words, and within that essay that Frank Bellany from Cherryville wrote was that poem that he put right, in there. Right, it was the poem. Yeah, and he submitted that to the magazine, and he did it. He was a student in Cherryville at the time. He was a student at the time, Okay, yes. and then so what happened is the magazine gets it. Uh, Frank doesn't win the award. A guy out of Clay Center actually won the essay William award Long. nationwide. Mm -hmm. William Law? William Long from Clay Long. Center. No relative of no yours? No relative. Okay, so William Long from Clay Center actually won the essay contest for the whole nation. Right. But then in 1892, Frank's poem appears in the uh, magazine. Right. And, but he doesn't get credit for With it. With no credit. It just appeared in the magazine. Okay. So how does it go from being in the magazine without Frank Bellamy's name to uh, a controversy that we now have as to who did the Pledge of Allegiance? What, what became, what's the next thing that happened that made that poem become the Pledge of Allegiance? Well, in 1891, a man who was, a, a, he, I even hate to say this, a Baptist minister, um, joined the staff of the Youth Companion magazine. His name was Francis Bellamy from Rome, New York. No relative of, to Frank at all? No relationship. Very similar in name. Francis worked at the, for the, news, for the uh, publication. Frank was a kid from Cherryville at the right. time. Okay. So how does Francis, what's Francis do then? Well, in 1923, Francis says, my back was against the wall financially. I had to do something. I decided to extort that little poem. I wanted people to ask, who wrote it? And I'm going to say, I did. Does he admit that he didn't write it? No, he never admits that okay. he didn't write so it. So Francis claims that he wrote the, the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, Francis Bellamy, who was working for that publication at the time. Right. So he would have seen the poem uh, and the uh, essay that Frank Bellamy sent in. Right. He said, when I joined, I saw all, everything the teachers had sent in because they're getting ready for the first Columbus Day celebration in the United States. Okay. And so then what happens is uh, Frank Bellamy ultimately goes to the Spanish-American War serves over in the Philippines and very honorably. Uh, and then uh, he has some health issues. He dies in, was it 1915? Yes, in Colorado. He had to go there for his health. So he was a young man. Right, he was a very young man. Okay. In 1915 he died. 1923 is when Francis declares, I wrote it. 
Okay. Was he was in 1923 when Francis declares that he wrote the Pledge of Allegiance? Is that the first time somebody claimed ownership of that other than Frank Bellamy? As far as I know, okay. uh, until up until his death, he always thought that the Bellamy Pledge belonged to Frank Bellamy, yeah. and everybody did. Well, his uh, the high school teacher knew the essay. His classmates, which you've got a picture of his graduating class, which right. you brought with you. Uh, and uh, so the uh, students knew it, that he had written it, so did his teacher. And when he went into the military, he told the people, he said, I wrote that Pledge of Allegiance. How did it get to be the Pledge of Allegiance that's accepted as the National Pledge of Allegiance? Who, who made that determination? President William Harrison with the Women's Relief Corps. Okay, and so he, did he make the selection of that yeah. poem as the national anthem? Yes. And did he do it on his own, or did he have a committee the, make the, recommendations? The Women's Relief Corps, which is a part of the Grand Ole Army, the Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, had a contest, and Frank's poem was submitted and chosen as the one, as the winning. Okay. And, and that's in 1897. All right, so uh, Frank Bellamy is still alive at that time when the president selects that poem or that portion of it to be the national anthem. But he was serving in the Philippines. He was not aware of it. He did not send it in. Mrs. Hendricks from Cherry Bell, who was president of the Women's Relief Corps, sent it in. Okay. Because she asked the teacher, and who was Mrs. Irene Powell, to have the class write. And Frank just rewrote what he had written before, which any student would have done. Same 23 words. Same 23 words. And I have met Dr. William Powell, who is the grandson of Irene Powell, and she, he says, my mother said, my grandmother says he wrote that pledge in her class. She was the teacher. She was the teacher. Well, you can't get much clearer than that, I, I wouldn't think. So the teacher helped him to submit it, right. or submitted it for him, I guess. Right. And, uh, and then it went in, and then uh, President Harrison determined that that would be the <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance. Right. And from there it began to grow to where uh, later when I was a student in grade school, we used to do that every morning, the Pledge of Allegiance. So yes. same 23 words. Yeah. We still do them. But we changed them a little bit. That They're we not have. The, quite the same 23 words, but yeah. they have been changed a little bit. But it is the same poem. Okay, so then in um, 1923, is it that Francis Bellamy says, I actually wrote that. Right. He said that Frank Bellamy of Cherry Bell plagiarized it. How could that be? He wrote it before. <laughs> and as a man, uh, George Miller, who's a reporter out of Madison, Indiana, where Frank was actually born, uh, said, how can uh, an editor of the magazine win a children's contest? Yeah, exactly. We're going to take a break. We're going to be back to, uh, hey, whatever happened to Frank Bellamy? Welcome back to Hey, Whatever Happened to Frank Bellamy? I'm Doug Thompson with Joyce Long. Joyce, you and I have been talking about the Pledge of Allegiance and who wrote it, and, and we both know, I've read your book, uh, that it was Frank Bellamy from uh, Cherryville, Kansas, who wrote it, and he was a student at high school, Cherryville, and uh, his teacher knows that he wrote it, the classmates knew that he wrote it. It was submitted into a magazine, and lo and behold, after Frank Bellamy dies in 1915, Somebody else, a Francis Bellamy, claims authorship of that Pledge of Allegiance, and he does so about eight years after Frank dies. And then at a later time, the guy that owned the paper, uh, owned the publication, that was the James Upton? He was another editor. He was the nephew of the owner, okay. Daniel Ford, who owned the Youth Companion magazine. And then he actually tries to claim some ownership of that document uh, as if, Somebody in his family wrote it. Am I right about that? Well, uh, Francis Bellamy had his book published, and Marguerite Bellamy, about Marguerite Miller, who wrote the book about Francis, decided there were two Francis or two Frank Bellamys, and she said, we need 
an organization to decide which one actually did it. And so she went to the United Flag Association to have them determine which Bellamy wrote it. But she did not recognize Frank Bellamy of Cherry Bell. She only had them review James Upton, one of the editors, and Francis. And they chose Francis. So Frank Bellamy, or nobody on his behalf, got the opportunity to participate in that. Right. Correct? Right. And as far as you know, that there, none of his information was even submitted about the teachers, about uh, the classmates or the people that when he enlisted in the army uh, that he told everybody they said I wrote the Pledge of Allegiance and right. and uh, that was before or shortly after President Harrison had said that poem will be the National Pledge of Allegiance That's we're going right. to honor the flag mm -hmm. through that wow interesting and they give it and but the interesting thing there were three historians on the committee for the United Flag Association and Marguerite Miller who wrote the book uh, that's very impartial, I think. <laughs> so how, how, does, how does Joyce Long get into this fight? How did you get into this fight? Because you're not related to Frank Bellamy. I was asked to be on the scholarship fund, and someone gave me the information, and I thought, this has to be written in a book. It has to be proven. I have been able to talk to the city of Cherryville, they finally put a flag out there at his grave site. I've talked to the commissioners of Montgomery County. They have finally have a memorial highway. What, what does the flag at the grave site say about the Pledge of Allegiance and Frank Bellamy? That this is the author of the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. So they looked at the material, the issue, the conflict that, uh, that they were faced with, and they determined local boy Frank Bellamy it's wrote the, the Pledge of Allegiance. There are two letters out. Francis Bellamy wrote to one of his workers, his secretary, and asked for a letter. And Robert, Harold Roberts writes that in 1892, Francis Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. When a man named Ed Tucker, who was a sergeant over Frank Bellamy in the Philippines, saw that information in the newspaper, he wrote to Cherry Bell and he said, in 1890, Frank Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. He told me that while we were in the Philippines. All of his classmates who also joined claimed that Frank Bellamy wrote the Pledge of Allegiance in 1890. And they would know because they were in the classroom with him and I'm, I'm guessing that the teacher probably had the students read their essays to the class and they would have had, of course, personal recollection of hearing that portion of it in there. And then they knew him. And right. so when it came out at the national publication, and they said, well, that's Frank's, that's the poem that Frank wrote. Right. They always felt it was Frank Bellamy and that it was stolen from him. Okay. So where are you going to go from here with your, with your efforts to get Frank Bellamy recognized as the author of the Pledge of Allegiance? I hope to go to... Jim Kelly, Jeff King, who are our representatives, I hope to have September 15th declared as a Frank Bellamy Day, at least in Kansas, because that's his birthday. And Cherryville is having a program on the 15th at the Cherryville Memorial uh, Museum, and we will have uh, William Powell, Dr. William Powell, the grandson. We will have... Um, a retired a military because Frank served in the 20th National Guard and uh, we'll have a flag raising and and just enter you know well, get people to know. Fantastic. Did Frank marry during no. his lifetime? Okay. Does Frank have any relatives that live in the Cherryville area anymore? None in the Cherryville area. I've been <clears throat> able to talk with Opal Bellamy. She's in her 90s and she lives in La Jolla, California. Okay, and what, what relation would she be to Frank? She is a niece. A niece. Did she have recollection of meeting Frank, of talking to him, anything about this? There would have, have been too many years between them. I think there's too many years, but she remembers her father always talking about Frank and that he wrote the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Now the book, Be the Jury, Be the Judge, if somebody wants to order that book, 
How do they do so? Amazon.com. All right, good. We're going to cut away and take a break, and then we're going to be back uh, and finish up on the story of Frank Bellamy and the Pledge of Allegiance because uh, it's an interesting story. And Joyce, thank you for all of the work that you have put into this because that's tremendous to write this, um, especially when he's not even a relative of yours. You just want to see justice done. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Welcome back to Hey, Whatever Happened to Frank Bellamy. I'm Doug Thompson with Joyce Long. And Joyce, thank you so much for making the trip from, you live in Cherryville? I live in Cherryville. And that's a long way. There's no easy way to get here. From, <laughs> and we got the rainstorm, yeah, too. <laughs> yeah, you did. And you wrote the book, Be the Jury, Be the Judge. And if you want to get an edition of this, uh, Joyce would be delighted to autograph it for you because you will be able to see her in Cherryville on September 15th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and where will it be in Cherryville? The, the Cherryville Museum. It's on 4th Street, East 4th Street, and uh, we will have a flag out and uh, cookies and punch and the whole bit. And Joyce is going to be working hard to get the Kansas legislature to recognize Frank for his accomplishments and what he did. And uh, thank you so much for watching uh, this edition of Hey Whatever Happened to Frank Bellamy. And Joyce, once again, thank you for making the trip and coming in to share this story on Frank. It's very interesting. Well, thank you. Thanks for watching. Hi everybody.